A champion is someone who realizes that while some things may be out of their control, they always have full control of their attitude, their effort, and their mindset. Okay, so this morning's been rather interesting. Uh, week 10, so I was sleeping, and the goal was to wake up um, this morning around six and go running before work, uh, even though I was really tired, just because I'm flying out um, to Wyoming for my race, uh, you know, for, the, for this uh, weekend's race, and I won't have time to run later after work. So it's kind of like now or never. And so at like 5.45, there was a board game. It was up here at the top of the stack and it fell right there, fell all that way. <laughs> and the, the funny thing is the game is called suspend, like balancing, like Jenga kind of thing. And you know, it's kind of ironic that it fell, but a falling board game, you call it random. I call it divine intervention. We both woke up just to the sound of a crash, you know, scared the crap out of us. And uh, so anyway, I was like, okay, I guess I'm up now. So I went and just did 10 miles. Then I get home and the door's locked. So I guess it had woken her up too and she had decided to go to like 7 a.m. spin class or whatever. Usually she doesn't make those early workouts just like me. We're both bad at getting up. But I guess she did go. And I guess she didn't think. Because, I mean, my car was in the parking lot. It's not, I didn't go anywhere. You could tell that I didn't go anywhere. She locked me out. And I have to get to work in 15... Well, not 15 minutes. I have to leave for work in 15 minutes. Just got back. I'm freaking out. I find some random guy on a bike. Chase him down. Ask him to use his phone. But she didn't answer, so I know she's already in class. And I'm just like, I was so mad. I was like, are you serious? And, and so the front door's locked, the back door's locked. And even, even if I get the screen, take off the screen, the windows and doors are locked. So it, there's no way unless I break glass. And I've never done that before. You know, I've only seen it in movies. Um, but I did check the kitchen and luckily, the kitchen window was uh, unlocked. So all I had to do was take off the screen. I bent it. I don't even give a shit. <laughs> I'm just like, I need to get in the house and get to work. Uh, so yeah, interesting morning. Got woken up by a you know, board game falling out of my closet, ran 10 miles, and then broke into my own house. Now it's time for work. Gotta go work 12 hours, then I'm flying to Wyoming. So, you know, life's always interesting. Yeah, I'm running in. Utah actually, flew into Utah, Salt Lake City, shakeout run, driving to Wyoming after breakfast. It was cheaper to fly in through Salt Lake and also there's a really cool breakfast place that we tried, it's called Cafe Nietzsche. Best, best English muffins on the planet. Back in uh, October when I did the ultra. Look at the mountain, look at the mountain. Woo. All grass, gotta love it. Week 10, I did 60.6 miles. The reason it was a little bit lower is I did the, um, the half marathon in Wyoming, which you know you guys can watch one of, you know, my, uh, one of my most recent videos where I, I go over the whole trip. Great trip. And you know, honestly, I, I did the race on Saturday. I, I was gonna run more than 60, but on the last day, uh, my girlfriend and I, we, were, we w took the ski lift up to the top of the Teton Mountains and it was just amazing. Took the drone out, didn't even think about the fact that maybe drones aren't allowed up there because there's like, uh, whatchamacallit, hang gliders and just, I don't know. It seems like anywhere cool to film is off limits for drones. So we're taking the drone out but then someone eventually after a few minutes, someone heard it and they, someone rushes over and goes, you need to you need to stop flying that drone or whatever. Like they're like, it's a $10,000 fine. I'm like, what? So I, when I heard that, I freaked out and landed the thing right in the rocks. And I saw a worker 
you know, that works on the mountain, when, you know, doing the ski lift or whatever. And he was like looking at us curiously and trying to like walk around, not towards us, but walk to the side to get a better view around us to see what we were doing. Like maybe he had a suspicion we were the people with the drone. And I didn't even know if he had any authority to give a fine out. I don't know how that works, but I didn't want to get reported. So we put it back in the bag and we just, instead of taking the um, ski lift back down, we just ran down the trail, down the mountain bike trail uh, during the winter, it's the ski trail, whatever, all the way to the bottom to avoid those guys. Uh, Cause we were, we felt very um, self-conscious. So to avoid a $10,000 fine, we ran down what, like six, six miles and 4,200 feet of descent. So that was the day after the race. So even though I only did six miles, it was a brutal six miles. Uh, on my last episode, I finally hit 70 miles for a week and my body was starting to break down. Everything was hurting. And uh, now I'm kind of, two weeks later, I'm still, I hit another 70 mile week, actually 72 mile week. Highest week ever so far, week 11. And I've run 20 days straight, no day off. Um, starting to feel it though, so I'm probably, I'm definitely gonna take a day off uh, next week, uh, but I'm just kind of rolling with it. I mean, usually the day off is to prevent injury or prevent burning out, I guess, also. But my body's been handling it, so even if I have lack of energy, lack of motivation, feel lethargic, whatever, at certain days, I try to run because I try to see my my health as a blessing. Like, okay, it's like Prefontaine said, you know. To give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. So if I'm healthy and my legs are feeling up to it, I'm gonna go whether my the rest of my body wants to or not. Because the limiting factor is usually some injury you have or you know something hurts. So when nothing hurts that much, I need to get out and do the work. But yeah, nothing worth pursuing is supposed to be easy. It's gonna be easy. Um, so you really have to work at it. You gotta, you gotta focus ahead. Week 11, 72 miles. Uh, notable workouts, I did two speed workouts. Both were kind of geared towards half marathon pace. One was uh, six sets of five minutes on, one minute off. The one minute off was uh, easy jog, you know, low sevens, 7.30 pace, whatever. And then five minutes on was, uh, started off like high 540s, Got down to 5.30s, the last set was 5.14 pace. Into, into a brutal headwind. It was because Scott, the guy I was running with, was pushing the pace, it wasn't me. Um, but a good run. And then a couple days later, uh, I did another workout with Scott and Ian, and it was um, four sets of two miles on, and then two minutes off. And it was supposed to be a half marathon pace. I did their half marathon pace because I I wanted to run, run row with somebody. If I do my half marathon pace, I'd run alone. So we did about 540, uh, 540, low 540s. And then the last one I did on my own, I did 532, kind of closer to my own half marathon pace. A little faster actually, but you know, trying to get in that uh, good, good speed workout. Um, but overall, not that fast. But both these workouts were still great because it's speed work compared to my marathon pace. So it was good, quality miles. Um, so I finished with 72 miles for the for the uh, week. Uh, yesterday was a really brutal run because after work I wanted to go to my favorite trail and do some hill climbing and descending. And uh, nice day outside except the fact that it was super windy. I mean, gale force, it felt like I was running through the eye of a hurricane or like the movie Twister or something. It was crazy. And uh, it says on the weather website it was wind gusts of 22 miles an hour, but I swear it was more than that. I mean, I was running directly into the wind. I Sometimes I was going uphill and it felt like I was running up, like I was about to fly, like float into the, into the air. It felt like I wasn't moving. I was like almost laughing at how absurd it was. And no one else was running out there, obviously. No one else was out there except for one couple who were in their car and they were like watching the sunset or something. And they actually came came after me at one point because 
they were worried for me, they said. They were like, how can anyone run in this? We thought, you know, you'd be in trouble or something, be stranded. <laughs> um, but I only did 12 that day. I wanted to do 16, but it was just so bad. The wind was blowing, causing a sandstorm. And just imagine every, like, 30 seconds a wind gust comes in, blows sand in your eyes. It was kind of miserable, to be honest. But um, good week overall. And I'm really tired today, though. Um, so I'm hoping that it's just kind of tired from the week and I'm not like, you know, overdoing it. Uh, but yep, uh, so week 12, we'll see what happens. So you probably can't see anything. There's not really anything to see. It's dark. Uh, I'm going to do my track workout. It's nine o'clock at night. I worked 12 hours today. Uh, so I'm pretty tired and cranky and all that jazz um, also you know just by doing more mileage uh, recently I'm just kind of like uh, not burnt out just kind of with a little lethargic I guess you could say um, and also I've been having to run alone recently because my work schedule has been really chaotic and I've been working a lot this week so I'm like tired and just kind of moody from work uh, and then on top of that having to train on my own because of my schedule to be successful you have to you can't lose sight of your goals you have to always in the, in the hard moments you have to always think about why you're doing what you're doing and what the in what your end game is what's the goal what do you hope to be? What do you, what do you hope to accomplish? And if you think about all those things, the answer will always be, I have to do more. I have to do this. I have, you know, it's never going to be like, oh, I'm just content with just relaxing or, or not, not working out or not doing this workout, cutting it short. Like if you ask the right questions, the answer will always be, I need to go for a run. I was going to do Yasso 800s, right? But then I'm coming up on the 800, I'm like 700 meters, and I feel pretty good, and I'm like, you know what? And I'm doing a sub 240 pace for 800, sub 520 mile, and I'm like, you know what? This is too easy, I'm just gonna keep going. So I decided to do mile repeats instead. But I was actually progressively getting faster, and I kept the rest down. So I made it a really hard fart lick. I basically did first mile I did four by one mile and four by 800 and in between I did a 400 meter jog in lane two or three so it was like a little over a quarter mile and my goal was to keep it keep it under two minutes so all my rests were like 158 um, so that which is nothing that's pretty short and I was still jogging like 745 pace 740 pace so I did uh, 517 then I did 513, 513, 510. And I was picking it up, but I I was getting pretty tired, I'm not gonna lie. And I but I wanted to keep the rest short and really work on you know my speed, but also my endurance, my cardio, my recovery. I wanted to make it hurt. I decided to cut it down to 800, same amount of rest, less than two minutes, but do 800s. That way I could at least keep the pace, the tempo up, um, but not completely fall flat. And I was doing, I did 234, 235, 233, and then a 230. So low five minute pace on the 800s. And you know, 512, 513 pace in the mile. So very, very quality, good quality workout. All right, so it is uh, Saturday morning. Near the end of my week here, uh, I'm going for another 20 miler ish, 2021, something like that. Uh, I'm going to run with the Run Club. It's about almost eight o'clock now. I have a Run bottle here, just one bottle. Um, it's got two gels in there, and it's got some salt tabs. So every half an hour ish, I'll take two or three salt tabs, or whenever I feel like it, really. But kind of around that interval, just to keep my, uh, you know my electrolytes up and then drink water whenever I feel like it. I don't usually drink that much, so it'll probably last me most of the run. Um, 
then I have gels, two gels from miles seven and 14. Basically, I'm doing probably eight or eight to 10 with these guys. So it's like my easy, easy part. Uh, they'll probably do, I don't know. I, I, honestly, the pace doesn't matter when I run with them, but they'll probably do anywhere from probably 650s, 650s to seven, somewhere in there. So that'd be my easy time. And then the last 10 miles, I'll run solo and I'll do, um, or try to do marathon pace. And then if I do any more than 20, it's gonna be a cool down. The one takeaway from this run that concerns me, um, outside of just looking at paces and whatnot, is my hydration. Um, I mean, it wasn't that hot today, but I felt like I, I consciously was drinking or trying to, but it was such small little baby sips that, I mean, I'm, I've always had a problem with hydration. Uh, like not needing it or not thinking I need it and just not being able to take in a lot of fluids. And I didn't even drink a whole bottle of water in those 21 miles, 21 and a half miles. Like that just doesn't seem right. That concerns me. Like that's one reason why I don't want to do a hot marathon because I feel like I get dehydrated. Uh, but yeah, um, it's something I guess I got to work on 